Hey everyone, Jasmine Banks back again talking about the show Push Girls, which as you know from either seeing it or watching me review it or Googling it right now is about four women in wheelchairs, actually five women in wheelchairs. It's got this Desperate Housewives thing going on where on the commercial you see the four women, but really in the show there's five or more. Um, but just like that show, it's a great show. It, it's got the drama, the comedy, the interesting stuff, the heartfelt stuff, and on top of it, it's an educational platform for the able-bodied community to understand the disabled community better and to break a lot of stereotypes. So in this week's episode, we learn that women in wheelchairs can go skiing. Now, not this woman in a wheelchair. There's no way in hell I'm ever going skiing. But that's my choice. That's not because I can't. So the five of them went skiing, and, and I have to say it was pretty awesome to see the kind of equipment they have and, and you know, how they make sure it's safe and fun, and, you know, and you have the different ones that are like, yes, they're into it, and the one who's losing her mind all the way down the, the slope, and then it turns into where she's suddenly just having a blast. So this was all cool, and I think an eye-opener to a lot of people. Um, now, when they went to the cabin to check in, now granted there were no steps, but it was beyond not accessible. It was very narrow, there were bunk beds, it was, just, it was not good. And of course it went through my head, well there's five women in wheelchairs, did no one make a phone call and ask one question uh, about this cabin? But however they ended up in that circumstance, I think it was very important for the able-bodied community to see that the littlest of things can be your biggest nightmare and can put you in you know, potentially a dangerous situation if you're in a wheelchair and suddenly you have no way to go to bed or get into the bathroom or whatever. These are very important things that one has to figure out before they go you know, on anything of significance like a trip or to the theater or whatever, even a restaurant. Um, I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've called a restaurant and I, I've learned I can't ask just one question. I have to ask, are you wheelchair accessible? And they'll say, yes, we are. And then I follow it up with, so do you have any steps? And often they'll go, oh yeah, just, you know, a few. And I'm like, but that's not wheelchair accessible. Why did you say it was wheelchair accessible? We're like, well, we have a handicapped accessible bathroom. I'm like, I am coming there to eat, not to go to the bathroom. And then, of course, there's a the reverse where I'll ask, is it handicapped accessible? They'll say, no. I'll say, do you have steps? No, we don't. Why'd you say that? Because we don't have a handicapped accessible bathroom. So you have to ask lots of questions so that you get the information you need so you know if you can go someplace. And that's the thing that I think the, the able-bodied community doesn't always understand about the disabled community is we have to ask a lot of questions and we have to give a lot of instructions because our mouths are like another pair of hands. It's like a tool because what I can't do with my hands or I can't do with my feet, not that I want my mouth to be my feet, but you get the point. I have to do with my mouth by asking someone to do it for me or telling them what to do because they work for me and I need them, can you please do this or that? Um, and a lot of times, for so many people, they experience someone not being happy at them doing this because, as I've learned from teaching a lot of home health aides, um, they feel like you're treating them as if they are stupid or that you're being bossy and telling them what to do or you're lazy and you don't want to do things yourself. And that's, that's the important thing for anybody that's, you know, working for someone who's got a disability or is just friends or involved, that no, it's, you have to get certain things done. You do have to ask. And, you know, you have to make sure that the right information is being given and received. You also need to just know what's, you know, if, let's say, someone working in my house and they've done some things for me. Well, I do need to know, well, what's happened? So if I ask them, oh, did this happen? Did this? It's, I'm not checking up on someone. I'm just wanting to know what's happened in my own house so that I can just be aware because when you do things yourself, you just know. If someone else does them for you, well, you would need to find out, did these things get done? Okay, was there anything specific that I should know? Just so you feel like you did it. That's the important goal in all of this is to get something done and to feel like you took part in it somehow. And it's, it's never to treat anyone 
in a way that makes them feel bad because you appreciate any help that you're getting. So I think that that's a very important thing that the able-bodied community has to realize. Why are there lots of questions? Why might someone be giving lots of instructions? That's the reason. Now they also touched on um, a topic of the, the girl Chelsea who in her teens became paralyzed and she noticed that men started to treat her differently. The same men that would have gone out on a date with her beforehand want nothing to do with her now. And I have to say there is a truth when you're a before and after disabled person. Um, now I was 10 when I ended up in a wheelchair. So my dating life wasn't really happening <laughs> before then. So I can't compare my dating life before and after. But I can compare how my friends treated me, how my family treated me, how teachers in school treated me before and after. And it was interesting because the crowd of girls that I was hanging out with, most of them, after I became wheelchair bound, didn't really want to hang out with me. And when they did, it was more to laugh and make fun and to make a spectacle out of me in school. And then there were the people that would have never approached me as a friend who then became friends with me that were genuinely friends because they, they were the type of people that just saw you as a person and that was that. And then there were the teachers that maybe weren't, because not all teachers in grade school are the nicest, not even in junior high or high school, but it was interesting. The ones who were not nice to me suddenly became almost my best friend and were almost too nice, but you could see that guilty look in their face. So it was interesting to see the before and after, how it makes people think. Um, in some cases, it's you're different than me and a bullying thing comes out in them, or it can bring out guilt in people because they realize they, they shouldn't have been like, so nasty to you before. What was the reason? Why were they treating you that way? So I think for all of us, you know, we have to think of how are we treating people in general, whoever they are. Because it always seems like when something happens, that's when we start to reflect on our behavior. Well, maybe if we could reflect on our behavior in a preventative medicine way, we could prevent ourselves from mistreating others. Because you have to ask yourself, why, why would you not be nice to someone? Why would you make fun of someone? Why would you reject someone? I, I think, you know, to just take a breath and think about something for a moment, you know, just like think before you speak action, uh, is important. And I think this is a good situation that demonstrates it, that you start to see the truth about people when something changes drastically about you in, in a health circumstance. Now the last thing that they um, touched on that I'm going to talk about was one of the women, Angela, who's 36 years old, is dating a 24-year-old guy. So that's kind of interesting in itself. But aside from the, the cougar thing, um, they were interviewing him and what's it like to date someone in a wheelchair. And, I mean, he's a really sweet guy, and he was talking about just the newness of the situation and how he felt like he's grown and become a man just over that because there's a certain responsibility, especially dating someone with a high level disability because, you know, there's stuff you're going to help them with. Um, and from, you know, experience, the thing I, I've noticed is people will always say to you when you're dating someone is, wow, he must be a special guy to, you know, to date you. And you're like, really? Like, what does that mean? That sounds rather insulting. Um, or he's special because he would date someone in a wheelchair. They would talk about other people and explain how special someone was. And I think it's a nice compliment, but when you really break it down, no, <laughs> it's actually not. Because it shouldn't be that there has to be somebody special in the world to date anyone, because that sounds like a pity thing. And the truth is, whether you're disabled or not, that has nothing to do with why anyone is going to date you because the jerkiest of people can still date someone in a wheelchair and you know and, and really like them and love them and and they're just a jerk it's people are people and there's certain things they can deal with and certain things they can't when i got divorced me being in a wheelchair was the least of my problems when it came to dating what was the bigger thing was that i had two children and that was the hugest turnoff in the world. And, and so it's, you know, if someone likes you, they're going to accept what comes with you. And I remember an ex of mine 
who I'm not going to mention who this person is, but it, it was a very, it was not a healthy relationship. And we were down the shore and just, you know, walking around, holding hands, very in love. And these women came up to us and said, oh my God, you guys are just the most beautiful couple we've ever seen. And, and you, you young men are just so special to be with her. And, and I always am nice to anyone who says this kind of stuff because, you know, they don't have to come up to me or to me and whoever I'm with and say nice stuff. They don't have to. But his reaction this one time was interesting because this would happen all the time. And they walked away and he said, I hate when people say that. I'm like, why? They were being nice. He said, no, you don't understand. I am such a bastard to you. But all these people keep saying I'm the nicest guy in the world because I'm dating you. He said, that's not fair to you because you're not going to be protected if something was ever wrong that you needed to yell for help for because they're going to think I'm a nice guy because I would date a woman in a wheelchair. They, they're just not treating you as normal. And he said, and that's what gets me so upset when they say that to me. And I guess that was the part I liked in him is when he would speak the truth. It was whatever the truth was about himself or the situation. And it really made me think for the very first time that, yeah, people are not judging us based on us as people there's a little bit of a pity reaction there. And it's suddenly, I'm not saying the compliments didn't feel nice anymore, but it was a little bit, bit of an eye-opener. And, of course, you know, if you are trying to say that you're being abused by someone, and then people say, yeah, but he's dating you, so he's a nice guy. He just probably was having a bad day, which did happen. Um, I think that this is an important issue for people to address. You know, just because someone's in a wheelchair and someone's dating them, you know, does that make them a nice guy or a nice woman? So I think uh, this begs so many questions. Um, how, I mean, the bottom line is how do we treat other people? And, oh, you know, what do we go through to just be ourselves and to get treated as the person we deserve to be treated as? So I would love it if you guys would share with me whether you're a disabled or not, what experiences you've had where you were treated differently because of something that wasn't about you as a person, but about something that came with you in, in your life situation. So I'd love to hear back from you. Put it in the comments below, or you can email it to me as well. And thank you very much for tuning in.